Ready? Uh, my name is John Beecham. I'm the uh, president of the Rotary Club London, and uh, we have been running police office a year uh, for 48 years now, since 1978. Uh, there was a gap with COVID, but uh, it's usually been every year. And every year we get amazing nominations, and I'm sure there are hundreds more police officers out there who no one knows about or has told about their stories. But this year, uh, Chris being selected was was uh, a very worthy um, person to get it, and um, I'm sure over the next uh, time you'll hear his story, which is quite remarkable. Thank you. Commissioner? Yeah, it's, a, it's a privilege to be part of the ceremony today that recognises Chris Maley as uh, the Rotary Club's uh, Police Officer of the Year for 2024. Chris has done exceptional work uh, in the Maricourt area as part of our Limestone Coast Local Service Area, focusing on supporting people experiencing child abuse and domestic violence. This is uh, critically important work for South Australian Police and Chris's contribution goes over and above, which is why the community of Maricourt nominated him uh, as a potential candidate for Police Officer of the Year and I can't think of a more worthy recipient. And as John said, uh, it highlights the work that police officers do in the community, quite often going unrecognised, uh, but playing a really important role in making sure that all South Australians can be as safe as possible. Thanks. Do you want to ask general questions or speak to Chris first? Uh, might speak to Chris first. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much to the, uh, the uh, Rotary Club and I am just touched. I'm humbled. Um, I do the work that so many police officers do and um, to be recognised is, is absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Questions? Can we ask Chris a few questions? Sure. Uh, what made you set up this organisation? Um, I found um, an opportunity where, or had a couple of situations where I needed um, urgent funds, and it was late at night, and I could not get it. So, like most police officers, we're problem solvers, we came up with an idea and put that into place. So would you say this was more of a team effort? Um, I think, oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. This is certainly, um, it's the Upper South East, it's a partnership. Um, I, I don't take this alone. Mm -hmm. um, I certainly share this with the other South East. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm guessing the small businesses in the South East also help out with this? Well, there are so many businesses that really contribute and without that, with service groups, um, without that close partnership with the community, we certainly wouldn't have what we've got now. Um, do you have any numbers about how many people you've already helped? Um, I would say I have submitted uh, possibly 40 to 50 applications. Mm -hmm. And have you actually seen an impact of this? Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that's possibly one of the most rewarding things that we do when you can see that people are, um, there. We, we're managing to change lives and to see that change is, is just incredible. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Chris? Questions for the commissioner? Uh, there was an incident uh, yesterday um, at Clearview. Is there anything that you're able to comment on that? Uh, we're talking about the, yeah. the injury to the young yes. boy with the hammer throwing. Yes. Uh, look, I, all I can say is it's um, quite a tragic situation. I know that this uh, young boy is you know, fighting for his life now as a result of the injury he sustained. But specifics in relation to the injury and the circumstances uh, are probably better answered by SA Health. Um, the officer will be inquiries in relation to what led to the injury occurring, but at this point in time, um, we're just hoping that he um, falls asleep. Do you have any general comments on the, I guess, the nature of the incident? Well, uh, as far as I'm aware, this is just one of those incredibly unfortunate accidents that happened. Um, you know, there are risks associated with participating in sports, but I don't think this is one of those risks that anyone would have foreseen. Um, yet, we're yet to know the full circumstances as to how it occurred, but uh, yeah, we certainly hope that the young fellow comes through okay. Um, I'd like to ask about um, domestic violence and the charges related to it, generally speaking. Um, people are gathering at Mount Gambier Court today regarding a 27-year-old man charged with manslaughter of his partner. Um, do you think there's a pattern of domestic violence murders generally being downgraded from murder charges to the lesser charge of manslaughter? 
And that's a very difficult question to answer. I think there are lots of examples where people are charged with murder and, and convicted and found guilty of the offence of murder. But the circumstances in each case need to be determined by uh, the, the district court, uh, the Supreme Court. Um, there'll be decisions made by the prosecuting authority in relation to what they are most likely to be successful on in terms of prosecuting the matter. So there are vari variables that uh, people outside of that process probably don't appreciate. But having said that, um, people need to be held accountable for the horrific actions that happen in a domestic violence situation. Yes, what do you say generally to people's concern that murder charges are being downgraded? Look, it's a, it's, it's, it's a very difficult question to respond to. Um, I understand community sentiment around this, but I'm not privy to the full circumstances, so I can't make any informed statement regarding the decision process that led to a downgrading of charges from murder to manslaughter. We'll just do last questions. Thanks, guys. And um, federally, it looks like there's been some funds that have been announced for domestic violence responses. How do you respond to that? Well, yes, I think that's an extremely positive step forward um, uh, for the Commonwealth to provide significant funding to assist in our response to and prevention of domestic violence is uh, very good news. Um, haven't seen the detail yet, but uh, we're hopeful that um, it gives us the capacity to do more for the community and to prevent women and children from um, experiencing domestic violence. Coming back to the office of the arm, doesn't you're incredibly proud of your safety team? Uh, look, there's not a single police officer I'm not proud of. Um, uh, everybody does exceptional work. We have frontline police that are out there every single day on patrols responding to all sorts of different incidents and often putting themselves in harm's way to protect uh, other people. But uh, a lot of what they do goes unrecognised uh, and even police officers themselves don't often consider what they do as exceptional, but uh, yeah, I, I have a different view. I think the work they do every single day, regardless of what part of the organisation they're in, is exceptional and worthy of recognition. So this opportunity to recognise one police officer for just going over and above in their specific role is something I'm pleased to be a part of. And uh, it feels like we've been reporting a lot more on domestic violence and child abuse situations and Sable has had a pressure storm, I think, where there's a crackdown on issues related to this. Um, how does it feel or, you know, is this a particular focus that you have for the Sable cracking down on domestic violence? Uh, family and domestic violence is a major focus for us. It is a major driver of demand for us. Uh, police officers spend inordinate amounts of time responding to family and domestic violence. And we have a role in preventing further harm to women and children who come forward and report uh, those sorts of events. So it, it is uh, one of those elements of our work that touches so many parts of the organisation and uh, for, for the work that Chris does to assist those families uh, after the initial police intervention, I think is really important. Okay, thanks guys. Thank you. Um, did you